are these people? I thought it was important because these people worked their asses off and sacrificed and bled and watched people bleed. Um, why is it doing that? Let's, let's, mm -hmm. oh, I see now. I see now. Okay. Popular resistance, right? Indie Media Award honoree. By the way, left voice was too on the, on that last article. Um, there's a good chance Luigi Morris will be too in 2024, but we'll, we'll see how that shakes out later on this year. Um, Tover says hardlines media. Oh, we know what that, what that sound represents. That is a Kofi to the QR code that you see down at the bottom of your screen. Thank you so much to anyone who's doing that. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Topher says Hardlines Media is much known as the, is better known as the Hunter Biden podcast. Uh, okay. Oh, it's Sean the Accord Lord. Thank you, Indian Reef. Ten dollars. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Love you, brother. Okay. Appreciate you, fam. Story I want to get to tonight from Popular Resistance Indie Media Award honoree. It's an open letter. It's an open letter from U.S. physicians and nurses after they visited Gaza. And my man, I'm like, wow. Um, I've read a few of those. Not yeah. good. Not not good. We we read from a Palestinian doctor. I remember a couple of months ago. So. This above team of healthcare workers, okay, volunteered to work with the WHO through the Palestinian American Medical Association. All right, now, remember, who gets into Gaza and who's still allowed to stay in Gaza? And thank God these people are still alive. They survived. They ran through. Yeah, yeah, Hambo, this is, I'm promising you, this is going to make you fucking mad. I'm sorry. All right. So they sent this, so Feroz, who's one of the doctors, published this open letter addressed to POTUS VP and FLOTUS, signed by 45 American physicians and nurses about what they saw while working in Gaza. Please feel free to distribute. A PDF can be downloaded from the link and or QR code on page one. I don't even want to read the quoted part. I mean, we'll get to the quoted part, but this is written on July 25th, and it says, Re-American physicians and, and, and nurses' observations from the Gaza Strip since October 7th, 2023. Your President, Joseph R. Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and Dil Dr. Jill Biden, we are 45 American physicians, surgeons, and nurses who have volunteered in the Gaza Strip since October 7th, 2023. We have worked with various non-governmental organizations and the World Health Organization in hospitals throughout the Strip, except none exist anymore, but that's my own two cents. In addition to our yep. medical and surgical <clears throat> expertise, many of us have a public health background as well as expertise in working in humanitarian and conflict zones, including uh, Ukraine during the brutal Russian invasion that was provoked by NATO and the United States, by the way, but that's a whole other than the Maidan invasion yep. and, and, and Victoria Newland and destabilization by Jake Sullivan and the Biden administration. But that's a whole other story. Again, back to the doctors. Oops. Some of us are veterans of the United States armed forces. We are a multi-faith and multi-ethnic group. None of us support the horrors committed on October 7th by Palestinian armed groups and individuals in Israel. So they are not Hamas. The Constitution of the World Health yep. Organization states, quote, the health of all peoples is fundamental to the attainment of peace and security and is dependent on the fullest cooperation of individuals and states, unquote. It is in this spirit that we write to you. We are among the only neutral observers who have been permitted to enter the Gaza Strip since October 7th. Because they murdered most of the journalists and don't permit any beyond that. Given our broad mm -hmm. expertise and direct experience of working throughout Gaza, we are uniquely positioned to comment on several matters of importance to our government as it decides whether to continue supporting Israel's attack on and siege of the Gaza Strip. 
Actually, it already has decided to continue doing that, but I, I hope it stops doing that today. Although Israel has all the funds and ammunition they need to do whatever they want to do at this point. Specifically, we believe that we are well positioned to comment on the massive human toll from Israel's attack on Gaza, especially the toll it has taken on women and children. This letter collects and summarizes our own experiences and direct observations in Gaza. We have, provided, we have also provided links to a much longer and heavily cited appendix summarizing the publicly available information from the media, humanitarian, and academic sources on key aspects of Israel's invasion of Gaza. Denialism will not work here. The appendix is available as a PDF file at tinyurl.com slash Gaza, doctor, Gaza doctor's letter appendix. This letter can be accessed electronically as a PDF file also. I think it says that twice. At, at a different, oh, at Gaza, Gaza, uh, tinyurl.com slash Gaza doctor's letter. Drop the word appendix and you get the, the letter itself. Right. This letter and the appendix show probative evidence that the human toll in Gaza is far higher than, the, than is understood in the United States. As we once mentioned, Ralph Nader said months and months ago that it, that it should be at minimum 200,000. However, what they're saying here, it is likely that the death toll from this conflict is already greater than 92,000, an astonishing 4.2% of Gaza's population. Our government must act immediately to prevent an even worse catastrophe than what has already befallen the people of Gaza and Israel. A, a ceasefire must be imposed on both Israel and Palestinian armed groups by withholding military support for Israel and supporting an international arms embargo on both Israel and all Palestinian armed groups. We believe our uh -huh. government... We Well, again, this is... The, the doctors are suggesting this. I get it. I know. We believe our government is obligated to do this, both under American law and international humanitarian law, and that it is the right thing to do. With only marginal exceptions... Like convincing people yep, go ahead. who are defending their kids to give up their arms. Good luck. Like... Two state might not be the best option here, but just saying, you know, what do I know? With only marginal exceptions, everyone in Gaza is sick, injured, or both. This includes every national aid worker, every international volunteer, and probably every Israeli hostage, every man, woman, and child. While working in Gaza, we saw widespread malnutrition in our patients and our Palestinian healthcare colleagues. Every one of us lost weight rapidly in Gaza, despite having privileged access to food and having taken our own supplementary nutrient-dense food with us. We have photographic evidence of life-threatening malnutrition in our patients, especially children, that we are eager to share with you. Of course, they're not eager to see it. Virtually every child under the age of five whom we encountered, both inside and outside of the hospital, had both a cough and watery diarrhea. We found cases of jaundice, including hepatitis A infection under such conditions, in virtually every room of the hospitals in which we served and in many of our healthcare colleagues in Gaza. An astonishingly high percentage of our surgical incisions became infected from the combination of malnutrition, impossible operating conditions, and lack of supplies and medications, including antibiotics. Again, which is the intent by Israel. Yeah. Where, where is the fact that Israel is intentionally doing this to them and to the people? The pregnant women we treated often gave birth to underweight infants, and they were unable to breastfeed due to mal malnutrition, of course. And they were not given baby formula either. This left their newborns at high risk of death, given the lack of access to potable water anywhere in Gaza. Many of those infants died. 
In Gaza, we watch malnourished new mothers feed their underweight newborns infant formula made with poisonous water. We can never forget that the world abandoned. Yeah, so got, hmm? got dysentery now is what I've also heard, mm -hmm. which, you know, classically big problem with clean water. Um, we can never forget that the world abandoned these innocent women and babies. We urge you, you fucking monsters, to recognize that epidemics are raging in Gaza, which you inflicted, you fucking pieces of shit. Israel's continued repeated displacement of the malnourished and sick population of Gaza, half of whom are children, to areas with no running water or even toilets available, is absolutely shocking and abhorrent and disgraceful. It is virtually guaranteed to result in widespread death from viral and bacterial diarrheal diseases and pneumonias, particularly in children under the age of five. We worry Which that un is on purpose, of course, we worry that unknown thousands have already died from the lethal combination of malnutrition and disease and that tens of thousands more will die in the coming months. Most of them, of course, will be young children. And again, this is the plan of the Biden administration, Harris administration, and future Trump administration. It doesn't matter who. Thanks, assholes. And for all the assholes that cheered for that fucking war criminal at Congress this, this week, too. Children are universally considered oh. innocents in an armed con conflict. However, every single signatory to this letter treated children in Gaza who suffered violence that must have been deliberately directed at them, as we all have known and do been documented for months now. Specifically, every one of us on a daily basis treated preteen children who were shot in the head and chest. President and Dr. Biden, you... We wish you could see the nightmares that plague so many of us since we've returned. Dreams of children maimed and mutilated by our weapons and their, in their inconsolable mothers begging us to save them. We wish you could hear the cries and screams of our consciences that will not let us forget. I mean, we cannot believe that anyone would continue arming the country that is deliberately killing these children after seeing what we've seen. The pregnant women we treated were particularly malnourished. Again, by design and by intent. Starved mm -hmm. by Israel. Those of us who worked with pregnant women regularly saw stillbirths and maternal deaths that were easily preventable in any third world healthcare system. The rate of infection in C-section incisions was astonishing. Women underwent C-sections without anesthesia. And we're given nothing but Jesus Tylenol Christ. afterwards. Tylenol afterwards. Because no other pain medications were available or allowed in. Because there are monsters running among us and running our countries. That are allowed somehow to do this. All of us observed emergency departments overwhelmed by patients seeking treatment for chronic medical conditions such as renal failure. That's kidneys hypertension, and diabetes. Aside from trauma patients, most ICU beds were taken up by type 1 diabetics who no longer had access to insulin due to the lack of medication and widespread loss of electricity and refrigeration. Finally, they Brain say... Incubators failed. Finally, they said it. Israel mm. has destroyed more than half of Gaza's healthcare resources and has killed one out of every 40 healthcare workers in Gaza. At the same time, healthcare needs have, have, of course, increased massively from the lethal combination of military violence, malnutrition, and disease. The hospitals where we worked, which are now all blown up and destroyed, were starved of basic supplies from surgical soap, surgical material to soap. Jesus. They were regularly cut off from electricity and internet access, denied clean water and operated at four to seven times their bed capacity. Every hospital was overwhelmed beyond the breaking point by displaced persons seeking safety. 
by the constant stream of patients whose treatment of chronic conditions had been interrupted by the war, by the huge influx of seriously wounded patients who, who typically arrived in mass casualty events, and by the sick and malnourished seeking medical care. So basically everybody there. Yeah. These observations in the publicly available material detailed in the appendix lead us to believe that the death toll from this conflict is many times higher than what is reported by the gods of ministry of health because that's been destroyed too. We also believe that this is probative evidence of widespread violations of American laws governing the use of American weapons abroad and of international humanitarian law. Are you listening? ICJ bring all these motherfuckers before the Hague. We cannot forget the scenes of unbearable cruelty directed at women and children that we witnessed ourselves. From the IDF. From the IDF. And, of course, by the leaders of Israel and the people who sent the weapons there, but mostly by the IDF. As we met our healthcare colleagues in Gaza, it was clear that they were malnourished, both and both physically and mentally devastated. We quickly learned that our Palestinian healthcare colleagues were among the most traumatized people in Gaza and perhaps the entire world. Like virtually all people in Gaza, they'd lost family members in their homes. Most lived in and around their hospitals with their surviving families in unimaginable conditions. Although they continued working a grueling schedule, they of course hadn't been paid since October 7th. All were actively aware that their work as healthcare providers had them marked as targets for Israel. This makes a mockery of the protected status hospitals and healthcare providers are granted under the oldest and most widely accepted provisions of international humanitarian law. No, they just blame everything on Hamas. Everybody is Hamas. You are Hamas. The healthcare workers are Hamas. The incubators are Hamas. The ultrasound machines, Hamas. We met healthcare personnel in Gaza who worked at hospitals who had been raided and destroyed by Israel and the IDF. Many of these colleagues of ours were taken by Israel during the attacks. Prisoner, kidnapped. They all told us a slightly different version of the same story. In captivity, they were barely fed, continuously physically and psychologically abused, and finally, Dumped naked on the side of the road. How nice. How humanitarian. Many told us they were subjected Only to... Only democracy in the Middle East doing that. Mm. Many said they were subjected Ugh. to mock executions and other forms of mistreatment and torture. Far Jesus too many... Christ. Far too many of our healthcare colleagues told us that they were simply waiting to die. We urge you to see, even though we know you won't, that Israel has directly targeted and deliberately devastated Gaza's entire healthcare system, and that Israel has targeted our colleagues in Gaza for death, disappearance, and torture. These unconscionable acts are entirely at odds with American law, American values, and international human law, and therefore you are criminal and should be put in jail yourselves. Dr. Biden... You worked with young people throughout your life. We hope and pray that you will not look away from the unspeakable uh -huh. horrors the youth of Gaza faith face today. Horrors only we as Americans can end. And only we as Americans helped inflict. We sincerely hope Amen. you will do everything in your power to stop what is being done to them, which is sit on your ass and do nothing. Yes? I mean, but... Biden would definitely be willing to sniff hair of these children, but I don't think he's willing to help them, clearly. Well, they're, so, they're talking to Jill Biden, who really is apparently running the country oh, anyway. Okay. President Biden and oh. Vice President Harris. Any solution to this problem must begin with an immediate and permanent ceasefire, and not just rhetoric or lip service to it, an actual thing. We urge you to withhold military, economic, and diplomatic support from the State of Israel and to participate in an international arms embargo 
of both Israel and all Palestinian armed groups, which are not arming in the first place, until a permanent ceasefire yeah, like is established. Go ahead. No, keep keep going. No, you. I mean, it's right. It's both sides, and it's fine. Right, and until go not fine, good, but and until good faith negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians lead to a permanent resolution on the conflict, which the Palestinians have offered all the hostages in exchange for their hostages, and Israel keeps saying no, 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 and they're just going to take the whole thing and murder everybody. Yeah. In the meantime. Number one, all land crossings between Gaza and Israel, as well as the Rafah crossing, must be open to unfettered aid delivery by recognized international humanitarian organizations. <sighs> Except they just blew up the Rafah crossing. Ooh. Yeah. Security screening of aid deliveries must be conducted by an independent international in inspection regime. In independent international inspection regime instead of Israeli forces. Yeah. Uh huh. Good luck getting that to happen. These screenings must be based on a clear, unambiguous, and published list of forbidden items with a clear, independent, international mechanism for challenging forbidden items as verified by the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in the Occupied Palestinian Territory. Basically, enforce laws that they have never enforced before. Number two, they are demanding a bare minimum right. water allocation. Of 20 liters of potable... And still keep Israel mm -hmm. as a middleman. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Right. They're, they're not making any real demands of Israel. They're really just making demands of the president to have them hold Israel accountable in this case, not anything more, because they're just doctors. Yeah. They're not trying to be political in that case. This is working with what they have. A bare minimum water allocation of 20 liters of potable water per person per day must be allocated to the population of Gaza as verified by UN Water. Number three, full and unrestricted access of medical and surgical professionals and medical and surgical equipment to the Gaza Strip must be allowed. This must include items taken in healthcare professionals' personal luggage to safeguard their proper storage, sterility, and timely delivery as verified by the WHO. That's something Israel was also doing, was confiscating these guys, these personal doctors' bags and tools and equipment. Incredibly, Israel is currently blocking any physician of Palestinian descent from working in Gaza, even American citizens. This makes a mockery of the American ideal that all men are created equal. <laughs> And that degrades our nation and our profession. Mm -hmm. Our work is life-saving. Our Palestinian healthcare colleagues in Gaza are desperate for relief and protection, and they deserve both. We are not politicians. We do not claim to have all the answers, or any actually in this case. We are simply physicians and nurses who cannot remain silent in what we saw in Gaza, about what we saw in Gaza. And I'm glad that they didn't. Uh, every day we continue to supplying weapons and munitions to Israel is another day that women are shredded by our bombs and children are murdered with our bullets. President Biden and Vice President Harris, we urge you, end this madness now. And this again is signed by 45 doctors and nurses who just have served in Gaza since October 7th. And here are all their names. And this is in popular resistance, and I'm sure it's available elsewhere. And it's beyond heartbreaking. And again, being inflicted by our yeah, country, I mean, don't look away, because most people are trying to, and it's gross. I mean, I am frustrated. The like, both sides is upsetting as shit. And no offense, as, I mean, no offense to these people. Like, they mean well, right? And I'm sure they're not all incredibly well-versed in this. Even the both sides aside, my issue is that we're relying on begging and pleading with a government who clearly has no conscience. Like, like I'm tired of the begging with this. Speaking of begging, you know? hey, we, uh, we do this um, for you. We are user-funded. 
And um, yes, I'm going to let you get back to it in a second, but I'm putting up the slides so that people see who has actually contributed and supported independent media. And we deeply appreciate that. Please join them. Cash that app slash dollar sign Indie News Network. Patreon.com slash Indie News Network. And you can see Stephen Rice became a new Patreon. Thank you so much. Woohoo! PayPal.me slash Indie News Network. And that's how we ended up getting that that uh, Kofi from Sean comes from PayPal. And we're on Rumble. If you're live on Rumble, say 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 so because um we don't believe you. Fake views. Are you fake views? Um, all right. So yeah. So you're frustrated with the doctors both sides. Let's get back to that. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily even that. Like, that's just not understanding where solutions will come from, you know? And, like, I get it. They're trying, you know, well, if 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 we're going to have a ceasefire, both people got to put, this is what our issue with ceasefire was, was about. Because it turns into this of, like, well, you know, we, we can't let these people defend themselves from an obvious genocidal, like, religious state. And anyway, like, that aside, I just, I get frustrated at, like, us having to constantly beg our governments to do the moral thing. It's infuriating and exhausting. It, you know? It, yeah. But, in, in every way, shape, and form. Um... And and to act like they're going to listen to us suddenly when they've not done that in the last eight decades. Especially nine months. So, What's going to make them start now? Right. All right. And that, that's the thing that frustrates me. But again, these, these are doctors that have survived. They went over there. They put their time on, and money and ass on the line, literally. Yep. Um. Hmm. And we've and we've read accounts from them and their compatriots. It's pretty fucking bad there. Like I, I don't do there are doctors who have had to amputate their own children without anesthesia. It is hell on earth, to put it lightly. So yeah. and we're and we're and we're pretty pleasing with cherries on top. You know, unlike an organization that's funded by Jeffrey Katzenberg, we are funded by our users and by the people watching now. And we love you for it. Um, please, if you can. And if you can't enjoy the show, watch the show, but support independent media because we need it more than ever to challenge the corporate crap that's out there. You can do so by any of the links there or by going to co-fee.com slash Indie News Network as well. We're the only ones telling it like it is out here. Because corporate media sure ain't telling you what's going on with this. Okay, they're trying to bury this stuff. They're trying to hide it. They're trying to make it inconvenient and distasteful for people to even discuss. We're not going to do it, and we're not going to turn away. And we're going to keep, keep spitting.